Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. My name is Kimir Baker. I am the CEO and founder of J Intel, a nonprofit organization that bridges the gap between faith-based and therapeutic resources. Being an overcomer, visionary, and God's creation, I empower women with their emotional wellness and intimacy with God to live abundantly. In this podcast series, we reveal that our wellness is not just physical health, but includes mental and spiritual health. True health and well-being include all three aspects. We transform our lives when we care for our mind, body, and spirit. Welcome home, ladies. I know you were so excited about our conversation. I started last week with Crescenda. We're talking about healing. We're talking about new techniques in terms of how to release these negative emotions. And you already know I talk a lot and I make people who come on the show talk a lot. And so, of course, I asked her to come back because we was just getting started. And I know we gave you a great little cliffhanger. You're like, wait a minute. I want to learn more. So we back so we can learn that more. So Crescenda, welcome back to the show. Please reintroduce yourself to us. So those who are listening for the first time, which if you're listening for the first time, please go back and listen to the last episode because it's going to really edify your spirit. There you go. Anyways, Crescenda, who are you? I am someone who loves God. And that is the foundation for everything I do. But I have been a teacher and administrator, licensed counselor, and a transformation and success coach written three books, have a book discussion coming up, uh, September, uh, starting Saturday, September. Oh my gosh. What is that date? The 10th. So on my website, you guys can find out about that. Love to help people to transform with neuroplasticity, rewiring neural pathways. That's me. Amen. And before we get into, cause you said you like the neuroplasticity, what brought you to the place of wanting to be a counselor? Because you shared in the last episode, you hit retirement, you stopped doing the math that you love. Why counseling? Why transformation? So my history, there's more, you can see a video on my website where I give a little bit more about my past. So I grew up with my father and my mother both being emotionally unavailable and therefore growing up in our society as Folks born in the 30s, as African-Americans, they had tons of challenges. So even though they did an amazing job and did the best that they could, we just were not allowed to really have emotions. That definitely impacted us uh, genera- gen- generationally, <laughs> generation after generation. And so it's, I became a counselor because I wanted to grow myself. I was working on my personal growth and my healing. So therefore, how do I do it? Went to counseling myself and then I went to take classes. I saw the need for myself and my loved ones and my personal church fellowship and beyond. And, you know, I saw people who were saved spiritually, but were so lost emotionally. Folks looking for answers, me looking for answers, solutions, healing. And what I realized was emotional intelligence was a missing link for so many people, emotional intelligence and healing. And I love learning. So that's another reason why I went to be a counselor because I love learning. Yeah. And that's very clear in all the things that you've done in your retirement. I'm like, well, but one of the things too, that I'm grateful for you sharing is that the things that you've experienced has been a platform to encourage and help others work through that experience. And I think that is such a, I want to say Christian attribute in the sense of God speaks about, hey, you're going through these things. You can comfort other people. And yeah, and, and just even how much more power that you're able to pour into people because you know from a personal experience that, man, this is something that I needed help in this area. And, and maybe they're not in tune that they also need that that assistance. And I will echo, that's why we do the podcast because it definitely comes from a pure place with me as well. And, and just being able to pour back. And so you said some big words, neuroplasticity, 
And for those who don't know them big words, can you go ahead and, and break that down and, and how that's associated with our subconscious? How does that work with timeline therapy? Because you brought that up as well. So I'm gonna let, I'm just going to give you the floor right now and just go ahead and feed our minds with all this wonderful uh, tools and techniques and, and things that you've learned. Wow. So people have been talking about neuroplasticity for years. We used to think that we were blank slates in a sense and that our brains could not change, that we're kind of stuck with our brains wired the way that they are. And scientists over the years have figured out that no, our brain, our neurology is actually has plasticity, meaning it can be transformed. It can be rewired. We can rewire our neural pathways. All right. So when we have a thought, when we experience something, our brain creates a pathway so that we can remember that. If we do the same thing over and over and over and over again, that pathway gets deeper, deeper, stronger, 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 stronger. You know, those dendrites grow <laughs> and they connect. So we have a, a pathway. So folks before thought that those were stagnant, that they did not change. People even have thought and said, we can't change our personality. But with neuroplasticity, we can change those neural pathways. We can change the way we think. We can eliminate negative emotions connected to past events. We can eliminate negative uh, limiting beliefs connected to past events. And we can become new in the attitude of our minds. So very powerful. Yeah. And so how do there, there's two things. I know that it may be redundant, but can you express what a limiting belief is? Just so people are familiar with that term. Yeah. So I'll once again share from my own personal experience. When I took a, I had already had a coaching certificate, but my supervisor, when I was in my professional counseling program, did a coaching cer certification program. I went, he demonstrated NLP and timeline therapy techniques, and I volunteered. And he asked me, well, what's the limiting belief that's holding you back? And for me, God just gave it to me. I always felt like I was not enough. And so that limiting belief in 20 minutes was rewired and it made absolutely no sense to me anymore. No sense to me. It made no sense. And it was my whole life feeling like I wasn't enough. I didn't do enough. I didn't know enough, <laughs> you know? And so I'm so very grateful. So, I mean, there are many, you know, God can work for everybody else, but he does it for me. I am damaged goods. Many people think I can never overcome this. I can never reach my goals. So there are tons of limiting beliefs. I am inferior. I'm less than. I don't have the skills. So those are some examples of limiting beliefs. And so is limiting beliefs associated with the subconscious? Yes. Our memories, we mentioned before in, in our first conversation that our memories and our emotions are stored in our subconscious mind. So consciously, our brain can only handle somewhere between five and nine pieces of information at a time. When we eat, we don't think, let me pick up the fork, let me grab the food, let me move the fork to my mouth, let me digest, let it go from, you know, from my mouth all the way down. We don't have to think through that. That is a subconscious process. You know, our subconscious mind is basically running about 95% of our life, the things that happen with us that our brain controls. Consciously about, is you know, what's going on with us is about 5% conscious. And thank God that God made us that way because there's no way that we can handle all of the information all the time. So we're on autopilot a lot. But uh, yes, those limiting beliefs, our emotions, our memories, all stored subconsciously. And the good news is, is that we can rewire. So for instance, I just can't keep giving myself these positive affirmations. I mean, I, I can't give you a number, but in order to change my subconscious mind, if I was just telling myself positive affirmations every day, it would probably not change my subconscious mind unless I heard it a million times. So here's where techniques like timeline therapy and meditative practices comes in and in a short, efficient, and effective amount of time 
rewires at the subconscious level. So we can eliminate those limiting beliefs. We can eliminate negative emotions like, you know, if you feel stuck with anger or stuck with shame or anxiety and fear, those things can be rewired at the subconscious level really quickly. Sure. And then that's where the neuroplasticity comes in, correct? Yes, we can change and rewire those neural pathways. So excited. And so, because one of the things you were so kind to present this information to me before. And one of the things that came to my mind was, hey, I've never heard of timeline therapy in NLP. Right. Yeah. And so why is it kind of like under the hood kind of thing? It's not. It just depends. Uh, People who are interested in personal growth and focus on it probably will run across it. Timeline therapy, the techniques were created by Tad James. They've been around forever, but this particular technique was created by him. I went to training for a whole month to learn how to do it. So please do not look up timeline therapy online, find a video and try it on yourself. Do not do that. (laughs) We need training in order to do this effectively because people can actually get stuck on their timeline. So people in the coaching and in career efforts to grow and be successful have probably heard about it more so than people in the counseling field. Sometimes it takes a little bit of extra time for science and evidence-based techniques to catch up with advances. Mm. I know when you said, don't just go Google, but I know my tendency is just to go Google. And because I remember when you first brought this to my attention, I went and Googled and I, I was quite surprised with the lack of usage as well as the wording associated with it because of scientific. There's like, there's not enough scientific. There's not enough scientific. So I'm not sure if anybody's done studies on it, but evidence-based procedures, there's so much, you know, for drugs, for instance, to be approved by the FDA or EMDR to to be approved as an evidence-based procedure. People have to do research. So I'm not sure that anybody has done research on this, but personally, it has Mm -hmm. transformed my life and my clients have been transformed also. Right. And within this technique, because you talked about the rewiring process, right? And then the subconscious mind. And so I think for a person who's listening, what is the connection in terms of, okay, if I go do this, What can I expect? That's a great question. What can we expect? So people come to me typically when they've tried everything else. (laughs) And I'm not sure why that's been a theme in my life. But one of my friends said, Lucinda, we can trust you because we know you've been looking. You've been working. You've been doing your own work. You, You seem to be a trailblazer in these things. And I do feel like coming across you asked, why haven't you heard about it? I feel like The story about my supervisor, God put us together. God allowed me to find this because I needed and wanted the healing myself, not just psychologically, but also physically with all that I was going through with my health. And so I think it's just God. I I can't remember your question. I'm so sorry. And there was some thunder in the background. But what was your question? The the, the question was, what what can we expect if we, yes. I appreciate that. Okay, so what can we expect? We all have emotional baggage. We all have it, and it doesn't have to be baggage, but we have memories that are stored in our subconscious mind, and we have the emotions connected to those memories and the thoughts connected or the cognitions connected to those memories, all right? Sometimes those cognitions can be negative, like I'm not lovable, I'm not enough. Uh, Those cognitions can be negative, like I'm not safe. I don't feel safe with other people. I have to be perfect. I brought this on myself, et cetera. All of our memories are stored in our subconscious mind. So with the timeline therapy breakthrough process, what people can expect is for those things to actually disappear, to no longer exist, okay? So simple memory for me getting harassed by one of my bosses in a school district that I worked in. Oh my gosh. 
trauma, trauma, trauma. This person was just mean, not just to me, but to tons of people. I felt a lot of grief with that, which included anger. You know, it was traumatic, sadness, fear, worry, anxiety, and even shame. Like, why me? What happens when we use timeline therapy on each event is in just a matter of minutes, the emotions disappear. The limiting beliefs disappear because we have rewired the neural pathways. So I'm no longer left, even though I had that traumatic event with a boss and I felt all of those emotions and though that baggage was with me. When we use timeline therapy, what happens is the learnings that we have replace the emotional charge. And Joe Dispenza said that best that a memory without the emotional charge is called wisdom. So we eliminate the emotional charge, the emotions disappear, the limiting beliefs disappear, and there's the miracle of timeline therapy. And I I do appreciate you sharing that because I will say, you guys, I've had the experience with timeline because Christian is so good at what she does. She said, girl, let me try this on you. And I was like, okay. And she (laughs) she tried it on me. And I really was impressed by it. And and I think you shared before with someone who gave their testimony in terms of uh, feeling relief, relief rather, transform and not beat up by their emotions. And I know I've shared numerously on the podcast, you guys, about me working through my anxiety. And during the session, one of the things that I learned was that I was using my anxiety as a coping mechanism because it was something there to tell me that my experiences was okay. And so going through this journey with Crescenda and and talking through it and getting to a place of an experience where I had that positive aspect infused in my being and the being able to hold on to that instead of that negative experience, then yes, I did feel a thousand pounds lighter and still am a thousand pounds lighter and happy. Did you know that a Healing Peace podcast is a part of a larger community? That's right. A Healing Peace is the educational component of J Intelligence, J Intel. J Intel is a nonprofit organization that promotes a faith-based message of healing and emotional wellness. Together, we create programs that empower women in their emotional health and wellness process with faith-based and therapeutic tools. These tools educate, connect, and transform into the abundant life that God provides. Learn more about JNTEL at JNTEL.org. And so I was grateful because just like what Crescenda was talking about, how God uh, placed her in the right location to understand and learn about this technique was very similar to me because that Friday, I wasn't expecting us to go down this path, but God was like, girl, you're still dealing with this stuff. And I, and I need you to be able to breathe and, and let go. And so Krishinda shared these techniques with me and I was just like, oh God, thank you because you knew that I needed it and that I understood it in that moment was keeping me trapped. Yeah. Yeah. And so many people have that same thought, Camille. You know, I have to do everything right now. I have to get it done. I have to do it. I have to do it. I have to do it. And that is a limiting belief. I I used to say I was a type triple A personality, not just type A. And my perfectionism, I was driving myself crazy and everybody else crazy. So I am so grateful to that I could rewire that and eliminate that subconsciously so that it's not driving my behavior, my thoughts, my mindset, that no, I don't have to be perfect. No, I don't have to do it all right now. No, God is in control. And even though I can tell myself that I knew it consciously, I knew it intellectually, but subconsciously, I had that those limiting beliefs that were driving me. And it's so freeing and amazing to eliminate those and to rewire those and to change those. Yeah. And and I think what you shared is so key because that subconscious piece, like you, you knew intellectually and for me as well, like I knew, I knew the root of it. I knew that, oh, this was hurting me. But even with that level of understanding, 
I still could not get out of it. Right. Because those emotions connected to those events that led to that thought, those beliefs connected to that thought are all stored subconsciously. That's how God made our brain. And so I'm so grateful that people have been studying this and to figure out how can we rewire that stuff? So we're not stuck with these emotions and the baggage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, one of the individuals who work with us with the nonprofit, she is actually NLP certified as well. And we were talking about it because I was like, I, I just found out. She's like, girl, I'm certified. I said, for real. But one of the things that she noted was that the freedom that it that it produces and understanding how God wants us to be. Like God wants us to live in that freedom. There's so many scriptures about freedom. In fact, I've, I've facilitated 20 some book discussion groups and a church in Miami with James Campbell as a, as a lead minister there. He allowed me to do a group with men and we called it for the women. We call it healing for damaged emotions. Right. And that's one of my favorite workbooks for the men. We called it men of freedom. And there's so many scriptures where God wants us to live free. Yeah. Talk about prosperity gospel. It's not bad. It's not all bad. God wants us to be free. He wants us to have life to the full. Yeah. And so many times I think we don't understand the implications of that because I know for myself in my youth as a Christian, I understood God as, or my way of life supposed to be very restrictive. And it wasn't meant for me to have fun on this earth because it's not heaven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be a limiting belief that even though we know that doesn't make sense and there's so many scriptures to say that that's not God's will for us, that he just sings songs over us. We are so, one of my friends said to God, we are to die for. So anything and everything our parents could ever want for us or the person who loves us the most, God is like a hundred times that. But in our minds, because of how we grew up, because of those significant adults, because of the religious craziness we may have experienced, we may not be thinking that way. And we can actually rewire that stuff too. Sure. And I do appreciate that because I know that type of understanding is what keeps us from drawing closer to God because we're like, oh, he's disappointed. He doesn't want to be with me. He's so restrictive. I can't do anything. I can't have any fun. Anytime I have fun, he tells me no. And and so then instead of being able to be embraced by him, we flee him. And thus for me, why I'm so passionate about the podcast is being able to reintroduce God in a safe way, not from all that religiosity, but just looking back to his character and that truth of his character. So I'm always excited when other people feel the same way. And so, because again, I I want our show to be a learner's show where people can get tidbits from and, and grow themselves. Now you talked about, For those who are interested in time life therapy, NLP, and what that means for them, you said don't Google. Well, feel free to Google it. Just don't try it yourself. Oh, that's what you see. Okay. You have to be trained. And it's actually unethical for people who have been trained as counselors to do techniques that they haven't been trained in. So I remember mentioning it to someone who's written a number of books and they're like, oh, they Googled it and then they tried it on their husband. I'm like, that is just just not intelligent to try something that you haven't been trained on. So yes, feel free to Google. You'll see some examples, some demonstrations. I actually have a demonstration from a, a class that I did recently on my website. The video is there, chrisendajones.com. And just in case, well, come here, you'll spell my name in the in the video. So you'll see how to spell Chrisenda. But yeah, I have a demonstration on my website. And people can look there, but yes, please don't do anything without training. Sure. And so when they go look for someone who's in NLP and timeline training, what should they look for from the individual in terms of, okay, I I should go to this individual or not? I, I think it's similar to counselors. You know, how do you find a good counselor? Number one is, okay, what specifically are you trying to work on? What do you need? Who has a specialty in that? 
And then a lot of times people of faith want someone who is a person of faith, right? And just like with counselors, we all have our own personalities, our own training, our own background, our own way that we like to do things. So I personally do know of a couple of other folks who are Christians and committed to God who do this process also and who are master practitioners. And so if someone feels that they would not be a good fit with me, I can refer them to someone who is a person of faith, whose personality and style may match them better. And then I also have tons of people from my class that I could refer people to if they are not, you know, wanting a faith-based experience. I'm not aware of, what is it called? Like a directory of people? Yeah, a database. Yeah, who do NLP and timeline therapy. But even on psychology today, some people do include NLP or hypnosis, or I've never seen timeline therapy on there, but some people do include NLP on their profiles on something like psychology today. Well, Christian, I definitely have enjoyed speaking with you today and being able to pull out all this wonderful information as well as thank you for helping me. And so I'm curious, do you have any closing thoughts for our audience about all this wonderful information that we learned about our neural pathways, our subconscious, being rewired, releasing these negative emotions? (laughs) It's a prep of information. I would love to share a few things. Number one, check out my website, ChrisendaJones.com. I have a book discussion coming up because we definitely need to start planning the things that God wants in our subconscious mind. We need to rewire, you know, our subconscious mind is like that tape player. And until we change the tape, it won't change. Not everybody can do that. Most coaches don't take insurance, for instance. And so if I could just leave you with a couple of practicals. Way before I went to training for timeline therapy in 2018, I went to training to do the workshop Mastering Emotional Intelligence. And I took the assessment that's in the book called Emotional Intelligence 2.0. The thing that was bringing down my emotional health more than anything was that I was not breathing right. That breathing, I tip you right. I'm like, I paid $7,000 to learn how to do this. And y'all tell me I need to breathe right? (laughs) That breathing gets you. So (laughs) if you cannot access someone who does timeline therapy, if you cannot afford, you know, this breakthrough process, which is just miraculous, do a little research. Google's good there too on breathing right. Okay. And then the other thing that I want to leave us with in my book, Mind Powered Singles, probably will change the title later on to Mind Power Healing, but I share a little bit about my story in the book. It's a great book for anybody and everybody, no matter your status. But I ask us to, to really be focused on gratitude, to visualize our goals and to meditate. These are just some practical things you can do if you cannot access time on therapy. They're things that we all need to do, but you may have heard the idea that what we what we conceive in our minds, that's what we're going to achieve. Going through our mind is negative, 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 negative. That's what we are going to manifest. If what's going through our mind are positive things and our goals, and we can visualize them, that's what we can manifest. So those are the practicals that I would like to leave with everyone. Even if you cannot do a timeline therapy breakthrough process, you can focus on being grateful. You can meditate. And you can really practice good breathing techniques every single day to calm your body, which is connected to your emotional state and your brain. Yeah. And I definitely echo all those things because I know that that's something that I've put in my routine and especially the meditation piece, because this week I wasn't able to have my meditation time. And then today I was like, why am I off? Yes. And I was like, ah, oh, mm-hmm. I didn't have it this week. And it, like, I, I'm like, I'm feeling it. So it does help to recenter. But Christina, I appreciate you so much. I love your learner spirit. And I know for myself, what I tend to do is I, I gravitate to those people who like to learn so I can get the information and not have to do all the work. Exactly. That's what I do too. I'm trying to learn from you too, true. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate this dynamic because I'm like, oh, I've learned so much. I feel like I went to school, but it was all in just an hour, two hours. Can you believe it? Hey man. Hey man. Life is hard and we need each other. I need, I need my tribe that that are people who the reason I started the first book discussion group was because 
I wanted people around me who were on the journey to just exchange information. Oh, have you read this? Did you hear this? Oh, oh, oh. Same with, with these techniques. Just so grateful for the people who share, who are learners. And those are the folks I want to be around. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely echo that sentiment. And we were always trying to encourage you guys to make sure you find your tribe to get that support. Because one of the things that Krishina shared in the first interview is that her growth and her understanding required individuals to kind of fill in those gaps as well as God filling in those gaps. It, it was all those things combined and, and look at what she's doing in her retirement. And so thank you for being a light. Thank you for being on our show and just sharing all these great things with us. And as she shared before, Crescenda, C-R-E-S-E-N-D-A, jones.com. Definitely go check her out and get more information on NLP and time life therapy and watch her videos, pick up her books. You're definitely going to enjoy all of those experiences. So until next week, when we get our little tools and tips show on, go ahead and meditate on the goodness that you heard today. All right, you guys have a good one and I will see you next time. <laughs>